George Janker was on his podcast talking to, is it Mike from Logan Paul's pod? And this is kind of wild. This is kind of wild, man. Logan Paul sounds like a piece of shit. And another example of sometimes the worst, or not sometimes, oftentimes, the worst people are the ones that make it, right? Why is it the worst people are the ones that fucking make it? Look at this, hear this clip, listen to this. The last straw for me was, Mike, I had to escape. I had to leave for my own fear. When Logan came after me for my religion, the show hit rock bottom and we weren't getting paid. I have a mortgage, I have my sister that works for me, I have Belle, I'm trying to get married, I had all these things. I had to start my own show because we're not making money on this show and I'm getting pushed out of this Well, show. at the time we were making money. I can show you my books, I was spending 10 G's a month being on the show. Right. What, what, what was he spending 10 10 G's on? Is that just his living costs? What does 10 G's, how, how do you spend 10 G's and you're not making anything back the other way? Or is it because he's already financially stable anyway? That's a lot of money, like, honestly, Amer you Americans, like, you make a lot and you spend a lot, innit? You spend 10 grand just to exist. Fucking hell. Name me a job that you spend ten thousand dollars to get paid. <laughs> and by the way, let's not forget that for a year and a half I didn't get paid. And I didn't get paid for years. But when I got pushed out and I'm seeing But why is that normal also, by the way? I've seen that with um obviously MacWop TV on the Apollo and stuff. What is with these people like I don't understand, like and again, this is me being naive, but if you're doing a podcast or any sort of content, you get the opportunity to kind of write your own ticket. You get the opportunity to kind of do, you know, basically work around your own schedule, no, make your own schedule. You get the opportunity to make a lot of money. You get the opportunity to put on fun shows, connect with your fan base, and maybe also offer your friends opportunity to work with you and earn some money too. And I always thought that it's pr it would be pretty swaggy and pretty cool to put your friends on salary or something or put some money in their pocket. That's pretty cool. Why was your when you're able to do so? Like, imagine what what that must feel like of being able to be like, "Hey, man, thank you for helping me out. Here's some money." Like, that's a nice thing to do to somebody. And I don't know why these big these big podcasts, especially these big ones that make thousands per episode, can't break their friends off some money. Like, why is it normal to just not get paid for a, a couple of years while you're doing the show, and then wait until they get a big deal, then you get paid? It's like, no. Why can't you pay me now while you got a small deal? Why can't you pay me a little bit now just for my time? Not pay for my Uber, not pay for my drinks or my weed like people do. No, actually give me some money so I can spend it on whatever I want to spend it on. If I want to go grocery shopping, I can do that. What is with these guys who make all this money on podcasts who don't want to, especially their friends who make the show, the friends who like help you in the back end, the friends who are on camera, who add to the entertainment of the show. Because a lot of these shows, I think they thrive not because of just the main star, because I think that's why I hated Joe Budden and why I can't watch Joe Budden podcast anymore. Because when that breakup happened with Rory and Moore, it almost felt like a, I wouldn't say it's a, it felt like a betrayal to the fans because it seemed like Joe was making it seem like we were only there for him. And it's like, no, we weren't. We were there for the rest of the cast. And if anything, Rory and Moore made Joe likable because Joe Budden for a long time was very unlikable. People didn't, you know, warm to his personality. But the podcast made him human in a way because you get to, you got to saw him you got to see him interact with his friends. So with these podcasts where it's like you and your friends hanging out on camera, and the entertaining part of the show is the dynamic between you and your friends. Why can't these main hosts like Logan Paul, like Joe Budden, why can't they just like sort out their friends adequately and make them happy because they add to the show it's not just you yeah we're there for logan paul impulsive he's the main one but we're also there to see how you because early uh, I, I also maintain i might be in the minority here too but i think early episodes of impulsive were pretty good the early episodes i remember watching it I, I thought they were quite entertaining and it did make logan paul look better because we saw him in context long form conversations you got to understand him a bit more as a person it kind of made him a bit human it kind of made him dare i say likable so not to help out your friends who are helping rehabilitate your image is fucking wild to me. Being that I'm getting pushed out and I start my own show. Do you know what my final straw was? What? I got my show going and then not only was I controlled and pushed around on impulsive, but then Logan's making calls and directing my show. And I'm saying, hey man. Yeah, that's when you overstep the mark. Fair enough, you don't want to pay me on your show, cool. But then no way are you now going to tell me what to do on my own show. 
I understand that. But to be fair to to Logan as well, you only do this sort of stuff to people who let you do it to them. So George Janko, it seems like for a long time, was allowing Logan to slap him on the ass, And then he, he finally grew up here. But you could also understand why Logan was doing that because he felt like you could take the piss out of this guy because he took the piss out of him for so long. You can't tell me what to do on my own show. That's not okay. What's that about? He told me that I couldn't take Celsius. This is a guy who's sending a screenshot of $11 million a week that he's making. And also, that's a scummy bag thing. I've seen that a lot, to be honest. I've heard that a lot from people where they work with people. So imagine you're working with people as host on your show. You don't pay them adequately, but then you're also in a group chat bragging about how much money you're making. That's a lack of tact, a lack of class that I've never seen. in my, and, and that probably is a, is a symptom of like new money, isn't it? Like, how are you so tasteless? You're not even paying your employees, your friends well. And then you have the gall to be bragging about the money you're making and screenshotting your Venmo and your Cash App and your PayPal and send like, ugh. Imagine how gross that is. You're bragging about the money you're making, but you're not paying your friends. Such weird behavior from people. And on top of that, we never got any money from in Prime, and we own that show. So technically, we should have gotten a percentage of that. I never asked for it like the way you did. I stayed the... <sighs> And I also don't like this thing of like making your friends ask you and then you give it to them. That's a defense of dickheads too. Because I heard, I heard DSP say that before about his ex-friends. I forgot their names. He said, oh, if they would have asked me for money, I would have given it. They didn't ask me for anything. It's like, bro, no one needs to ask you for money. If you're making a ton of money, break your friends off. You do, they don't need to fly out and say, hey, could you give me something for this? No, just break them off some money, you fucking piece of shit. Honestly, these people, man, it's like, uh, I don't understand. I, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I really don't get it. Like, 11, allegedly making 11 million a week, you can't even break off these guys like 500 grand. <laughs> you can't give them 500. And I'm not even saying a mil. You can't give them 500K. Nah, you can't. You can't give me even a mil just to keep them nice and on your, on your good side, no? Cool the f out of it i didn't care because i'm grateful for what i'm making i'm gonna go start my own business but when i come over here because i'm scared i'm gonna lose my job here i go logan i will take half the deal if you want to put it on the table for my show he says i won't pay you a dime you're here because of me jesus and then i said well what do you want me to do for my bills bro i got no money and he says go have your rich dad pay for it listen that's we <sighs> big up big up big up big up big up this is spartan yeah, big up, Adzi. It must be hard for this mic guy, innit? And I, I, have you guys had this before? I don't think I've ever had it because, again, I don't really have a big circle of friends, but it must be hard, innit, when you're friends with somebody, when you're friends with, some, when you're friends with someone who's a dickhead to another one of your friends, but they're good to you. That must be really awkward, innit? Because Mike has heard these stories before. Mike has heard these stories from several people of how much of a piece of shit logan is but logan is really good to him <sighs> it must be a, it must put you in a bit of predicament because you you see it you see the amount of people that come up to you and say logan did me dirty with this with this with this with this but he's been really good to you really good to you to the point where he legitimately changed your life what do you do do you turn a blind eye to all the negative stuff they say about logan do you believe it and keep one because that's the thing i think happened to rory or more i know i keep going on about this but it still breaks my heart that the job on the podcast broke up i think rory or more i think this is where academics was really right academics was right in that rory or more thought they were special they didn't think joe would fuck them but joe's got a history of fucking people he's the king of self-destruction but they didn't they thought they were immune they thought they were above the fucking they thought because they started you know the joe Biden podcast together that joe would never fuck them but eventually he did so i wonder if you're mike are you keeping one eye open on logan in case he does that to you because he does that to you know he fucks everybody so are you are you thinking you could be next or or do you think that logan is one of those sickos as well similar to brendan in a way where he's a dick to a lot of people but he also keeps one or two people sweet in to have his back because brendan does that pretty well he's a dick to most people but he, he you know he does random acts of kindness to stave off the hounds and also keeps a few people sweet 
just so they can be the counter to the narrative that he's a piece of shit. Fighting everybody. Words, bro. Look at me. No, That's but no, fighting but you, words, bro. you, you, you don't bring you up say, somebody's father. Would you say bro. that the way that you handled it from a word standpoint was mature, acceptable? That I beat the brakes off of him? Correct. If he was in <laughs> front of me, I would have swung at him. Yeah, but Logan would have broken your face, though. Let's be fair. I know, obviously, as a man, you have to stand up for yourself. You can't let somebody talk to you that way. But Logan would have legitimately broken this guy's face. You know what I mean? He's like, what, 100 pounds bigger than him as well? It's like, yeah, it, it legitimately wouldn't be a fair fight. But um, I'm happy to see George doing well, though, by himself. I'm not going to lie. Especially considering that, you know, he wasn't that famous before he got on Logan. And then he probably made his name there. And then he's somehow able to take that little bit of notoriety and make it into a proper flourishing channel. That says a lot, to be fair. Um, so big up him and also he wasn't associated with logan as long as mike was mike has a lot more association with logan has a lot more you know skin in the game with him so for george to have such a short time spending with logan and still get that much out of it i give him props man well done to him well done to him for doing so really fucking well done to him but logan paul sounds like a real piece of shit wow he didn't give any of his friends a cut of celsius no cut of prime no money early on was bragging about the money in group chats without paying them adequately <sighs> imagine being on logan paul's team no imagine being a co-host on logan paul's podcast but you can't pay your mortgage <laughs> surely you'd think you'd be getting paid for that isn't it you're on a podcast with logan paul a weekly one but yet you can't pay your mortgage come on man come on some people just also like get taken advantage of i think as well some people just have like an advantage taking fetish or something as well because i could never let someone play with me like that like what i'm on a podcast with logan and i'm not getting paid at all no mortgage payments no all right cool man cool but yeah Big up George Janko. Yo, big up Assad. Well, go on. George built like the Musinex monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of also looks like that. That what's those things? Is that what? Is that the same thing that you said? Is that Musinex monster the same thing as this? I'm thinking of. You said what's the what? Mus, mu, what's his name? Musinex monster. Is that the same thing I'm thinking of? Yeah, he looks a bit like that, but he also looks a bit like this. What are those things? What are those? Um, what's the monster in Super Mario? The little short ones with the overbite, with the under underbite, whatever. Monster in Super Mario. Do you get? Do you get what I mean? I think I might have played on Super Mario sixty four back in the day. He kind of looks like that. This one, yeah, that Gomba, yeah. George Janko looks a bit like a gomba, no? <laughs> Does he look a little bit like that? <laughs> let's get the video. Let's get the fucking, no? Doesn't he look a little bit like one of these? A little bit. <laughs> no? <laughs> it's not a lot, but it's, there's something there. There's definitely something there. There's definitely something there. And of course, we've got um, Assad's one as well, which is this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe, it, maybe it's a mix. It's a mix between all those, all those three. It's a mix. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue. Let's continue.